when you're teaching, do you ever think, is this cultural? You know? How much is culture? How much is Dharma? Yes, how much is Dharma? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful question. I like that very much. Uh, there's so many things about the culture. Because the cert certain step of the Dharma needs to hold with the culture so that we can connect, so that we can understand, so that we can value, so that we can practice. You know, certain things doesn't need to be adapt with the culture. You know, and that we need to understand. You know, like so many things in this atmosphere 99% is like part of a culture and a very few of them are actual Dharma you know so that's what you see because when you are outside of the retreat when you never practice you see this Buddhism so big you know and when you go in the retreat when you practice and when you come out and you see the Buddhism is so simple and so pure and simple and easy to understand as simple as that but once we don't have any experience and then uh, when we exaggerate a little bit too much and then there's so many possibilities that we will go in the wrong way. But in Vajrayana, there's so many things about the culture. And just in general, there's so many things about the culture. But that's why I always tell people, you know, there's so many things. You know, but what we actually we need is the teacher and the student and the commitment and the Dharma practice itself and that is your Buddhism. Don't make Buddhism more complicated than it actually is. You know, so uh, there's so many things about the culture. And there's uh, so little about the Dharma that we really don't recognize very often. And for that, we need to increase how we understand about the Dharma practice. We need some time for ourselves to see the difference, I think. Because I cannot like, explain to you in every detail what is culture, what is Dharma, what is culture, what is Dharma. You have to discover by yourself. Yeah? But anything with the obligation is not a Dharma. Anything without obligation is the Dharma, from my point of view. Like example, if you start doing the Dharma practice like a gym, it will never ever help you. But if you start appreciating Dharma, what you read, what you understand through your experience, through your patience, and then the few sentences of the Dharma teaching is more than enough for the rest of your life. You know? But if we keep on doing like a gym, and it will stay as a gym, it will never improve or connect to our own mind. And that was my first problem. You know, because I start doing like a gym every day. Okay, I must do this, I must do that, I must do this, I must do that. Okay, three o'clock in the evening, I must do this. So everything becomes like a, uh, like a job. You know, okay, if I don't do this, then it's bad. Well, what is actually bad? There's no bad. But you make yourself feel bad because you follow this obligation. We need to practice with the, with the quality, not with the length, how, how long we practice. Because our problem as a practitioner is we always, always tell us, okay, I practice this long, so that means I have a more experience. Actually, that is absolutely not true. You know, the quality of the practice can improve in one month in how much you give from your heart, how much you understood from your teacher. And the culture thing is very easy to recognize. Yeah, that's my point of view. Can I take a picture of all of you, if you don't mind? Usually, oh yeah, you should do that, you know. Please, everybody smile. And, uh, oh, selfie. 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 Thank you for your photo. Okay, am I fitting in? I don't know if you're in there. If you're, yes. I don't see you. Uh, because I'm too tall. <laughs> there, you there you go. Now just the top of your head. Tilt it down. Yeah, tilt it down. Okay. There you go. Thank you so much. And I'm a big fan of yours. All of you. And thank you for your teaching. Okay. Did I took a good photo? Let's see. That's a pretty interesting.